So, next talk, um, please welcome Chris. Hello, everybody. Our topic for this talk is how to play free and libre open source software keyboards like it's 1978 and embarrass your kids because you're playing dead rock. Uh, <laughs> um, my name is Chris. Uh, when I'm online, when I'm programming, you can find me as a Spotlight Kid, for example, on GitHub. And when I'm doing music, I started calling myself Pl also Spotlight Kid, but instead of a metal umlaut, I choose to have a metal Y. <laughs> Um, before we get into the talk, um, I want to show you some music. Um, despite the title of the talk, there isn't going to be much actual keyboard playing, but uh, I wanted to show you some tracks I made using keyboard software, open source software, of course, uh, so that you s have something to look at while the track is playing. I'm going to play the audio session, so the playback of the track is coming from the audio player. But for this track, I just uh, recommend just close your eyes and listen, because it's rather spacey. Let's see how this goes.
Okay, I hope everybody had a nice afternoon nap. <laughs> so this track was called Parta Eclipso to go with the Esperanto theme of Sonoi. And uh, yeah, Eclipso because uh, equinox and oxygen, and well, of course. Okay, um, my talk is, uh, has basically four parts. Um, first, some history lesson. Then we're going to talk about my recommendations for uh, free instruments and samples which you can use to make this kind of music or music uh, from the era. Then we look at this track and another track. And then we'll hear that other track at the end. And then there's time for questions, hopefully. So why 1978 and why keyboards? Well, I'm an old-fashioned guy, as you've heard. Uh, I like old stuff, I like old instru instruments, and uh, in the 70s uh, still a lot of older instruments were used because synthesizers were relatively new. There were barely any polyphonic synthesizers. The famous Prophet 5 came out that year, 1978, uh, and then there was only the Yamaha had one, and uh, well, I don't think there were much else polyphonic, real polyphonic uh, synthesizers. Uh, you had still a lot of uh, electromechanical instruments like Rhodes piano or the Wurlitzer or in use or other electronic instruments like string machines. Uh, we were on the cusp of the digital revolution. Uh, incidentally, that year the first commercial FM synthesizer came out, and no, it was not from Yamaha, it was the Synclavier, but they licensed the technology from Yamaha. And there was some great music. For example, uh, Jean-Michel Jarre brought out his, um, I don't think it was his fourth album, um, Equinox, that year, after the great success of Oxygen, of, of course. Yeah. And why keyboards? Well, most electronic instruments have keyboards. Uh, we have to probably thank Robert Moog for that. Or Moog. Um, most virtual instruments, software instruments, are meant to be played via keyboard. Uh, and there's a great variety of instrument types, by which I mean uh, how they produce sounds. We have uh, struck. You have strings that are struck, or reeds that are struck. You have uh, tapes that are played back, and all that kind of stuff. So it's interesting technology involved. So let's have a look when certain keyboards and technologies actually became available. Because you'll see some of the stuff came rather late. So I only listed instruments which are uh, either important from a technolo technological standpoint or because when they're used significantly in popular music. And I don't mean jazz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the year listed uh, means the general availability. So when people do actually start making music with that. So uh, we have the Hammond organ. Everybody knows the Hammond organ. Uh, think blues, think John Lord, uh, and gospel music. Uh, but Hammond also made a synthesizer. And it was made with valves, these glowing things, lots of these glowing things, uh, which probably explains why it wasn't uh, built anymore after the war. Uh, but you can hear it in a lot of old movies for sound effects. Uh, already in the 50s, we have the Chamberlain, which is the predecessor of the Mellotron, which will become uh, very important later, which is a kind of analog sampler. And we also already have the Wurlitzer electric piano. So the Wurlitzer becomes, comes before the Rhodes, which I didn't know until uh, some time ago. Um, oh, there is a syntax. <laughs> syntax typing failure. So uh, in the 60s, we have, early 60s, we have the Mellotron. The Mellotron was important because it could play back single instrument sounds. So 
you could play strings with it and choirs and violins and it made the union very unhappy. Sixty-five, <laughs> uh, we have the first commercially available full-size Rhodes piano. And the Rhodes piano becomes a very important instrument because it's the first time you have something which has the dynamic expressiveness of a piano. And so it was used immediately in in jazz, uh, in, in bossa nova, and starting from the 70s also in pop and rock music. Uh, but there's also another roadside in uh, instrument, which is the Hona Pianet, uh, which is hardly known today anymore. Uh, interestingly, it's a German instrument uh, developed by somebody working at Hona. Uh, it works similarly to a Wurlitzer and sounds something like a cross between a Rhodes and a, and a Wurlitzer. And you can hear it uh, on some tracks by the Zombies, Beatles, and also Genesis, uh, the name we, we s we'll see a lot here, uh, used it in their early work. He, um, Tony Banks from Genesis used it as a solo instrument and he sent it to a fuzz box, so it sounds a bit like a guitar. Uh, you can hear that on, uh, I think, on the famous... Uh, is, it, is it the musical box or is it... I don't know. So, at the end of the 60s, we're starting to, to get into synthesizers. And the first synthesizers we have commercially available are from Moog and in a minor way from Buchla, but he catered more to the Academia. Um, but the first synthesizers we had, they were huge. I mean like this. But that didn't stop some people uh, taking them out on stage. A uh, famous example is Keith Emerson from Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Um, we also have the first instruments that try to sound, uh, try to emulate the piano electronically, uh, so not uh, electroacoustically like um, a Rhodes, but just with ele electronics. So the a RMI Electra piano. Mm, famous passage, for example, is the intro to uh, The Lamp Lies Down on Broadway and Carpet Crawlers by Genesis. And we have the first uh, drum machines. Uh, I just listed one model here uh, because it was also used by Jean-Michel Jarre on his early works. Um, then we have the more famous version of the Wurlitzer piano. That's the one that looks like, I don't know, like a, a plastic uh, secretary drawer thing from, <laughs> from the 50s, um, which would, uh, you'll probably all know the sound of from, from Super Tramp. And then finally, uh, only 1970, we have the first synthesizers that look like we're uh, we know them, like a keyboard with some knobs. And the first of these are the Moog Minimoog, and later um, the Arp Odyssey. Um, this is another synthesizer. This one is from Britain. That's why it was used by Pink Floyd. This is mainly used for making weird noises, like wind noises and chirps and pews and, and, and all that stuff. Um, we're starting to have the first synthesizers that have presets, so you can switch on the fly while, you, uh, while you're playing. And we have the first string machines. These are kind of like synthesizers, but not really, because mm, while they make the sound uh, with electronics, they don't have articu articulation per single note. So you have only one envelope that shapes the sound for all the notes that you play. So you can't have, uh, I don't know, independent polyphonic bass notes or something like that. But they kind of replace the mellotron when you try to have strings on stage. And you all know them by, I don't know, cheesy soft sex films from the 70s. <laughs> They're this wavering sound in the background. <laughs> um, 
yeah, we have the first synthesizer modules, so things you could put next to your synthesizer to give it more voices. And then around the middle of the de decade, we have the first kind of polyphonic synthesizers. The Polymog was more a string machine with extra stuff uh, rather than a synthesizer. We have synthesizer bass pedals, and we have the Yamaha GX1, which is a huge thing. Uh, looks more like a, a theater organ. And we have the Oberheim 2 and 4 voice, which are polyphonic, but you have to set up each voice by itself. So not really made for stage. Uh, and then we have 1976, the first uh, thing that sounds like a piano that you can bring on tour because it's rather lightweight, it's only 100 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> but you can take it apart into two halves. So actually you can carry it with two persons. I've done that myself. I'm a proud owner of a CP70 myself and I won't give it away. <laughs> um, and you can hear this CP70 all over the early 80s like Toto or Michael McDonald, Doobie Brothers. Uh, well, you can hear it everywhere. Okay, then we have the first real polyphonic synthesizers. Uh, one of the most famous ones is the CS80, uh, which also is rather large still. Um, but you had only like, I don't know, eight presets or something like that, which you had to set up with switches. Um, so that brings us to 1978, where we ha have the sequential circuits Prophet 5. And the Prophet 5 is remarkable because it had a microprocessor inside that allowed you to store patches and retrieve them with a click of a button, and it was polyphonic. Uh, so it was used by basically everyone. And we also have the beginning of digital synthesizers, like the PPG wave computer, the Synclavier, and we have the first drum machine that had programmable rhythms. All the others before, you could just select, I don't know, tango and swing and cha-cha-cha <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> so, uh, to sum this up, uh, oops. We have synthesizers from musicians available since the late 60s, polyphonic synths since mid or late 70s. Before, you had to use string machines or the Mellotron if you wanted polyphony, or a Rhodes or a Wurlitzer or something like that. Uh, Rhodes and Wurlitzers and string machines were still used a lot. Um, some instruments we still have today, like the Rhodes piano, some, like the pianet or string machines, you hardly see anymore in use today. So, that concludes my history lesson. Uh, questions so far? Okay, let's move on. So, what if I want to have the sounds of these instruments, but don't want to lug around 100 kilos or pay... 10,000 euros to buy vintage gear. Well, the good news is we have lots of plugins under Linux for virtual instruments, a lot of synthesizers, and we get new plugins basically every week. Um, we also have nowadays good support for playing back sample libraries. Uh, the most important Sample library format here is SFZ uh, or FSC. Uh, and we have uh, some good players for these libraries. Uh, I'll just name as bits. Uh, we have a growing pool of these libraries, but unfortunately, a lot of these are still not available under a really free license. Uh, and some of them are. Well, kind of nice, but when you start using them, 
you noticed uh, they have lots of warts and need some work. Okay, I now like to go through some of the instruments and just list some software which is available. I'll go through this rather quickly because it's just a list and gets boring. This is more of a reference. I'll put up the slides for this talk afterwards and I'll post, post the link on, on the chat or in, in the email and uh, you can uh, reference this list afterwards. So, most important for keyboard players, of course, is the piano. Unfortunately, it's also the hardest to emulate, so basically we are stuck with samples. But also, sampling a piano is hard, so while some of these sound okay, or good, even, um, I must admit that uh, commercial software still leaks ahead in this regard. Uh, but if you just want to add piano to your track, it's not a solo piece, you just want to, I don't know, play some boogie, or uh, they're totally fine. Mm, the first one is rather nice, but it's also rather huge, and you need a good computer to use that. Um, I also mention Piano Book very often, which is a site where you can find sample libraries. Most of them are for contact, but a lot of them are for SFC as well. The problem with that is it, they're not really free. You can use them freely, but you are not allowed to redistribute them. So you have to register with an email at their site, and then you can download the libraries, but you're not supposed to give them to somebody else. So they're not really free, but if you just want to make some music, they're fine. So electric pianos. I also mentioned, already mentioned the CP70, or the bigger version, the 80. Uh, we have samples for that. Uh, I'm not aware of any free software emulations. Fender Rhodes Piano, mm, if you just want to have quick and dirty, just use the MDA ePiano plugin, uh, which is enough if you just have, a, have the ePiano in the background or as a rhythm instrument. Uh, but it's a very old plugin. The samples are not very big, so don't expect too much. But it's an easy way to, to have Rhodes Piano on your track. Um, for the track we're going to listen to today, later on, I used the M Rhodes sample library from Piano Book. Of course, you can also try uh, building your own Rhodes Piano sounds with FM synthesis, and, and then you mostly get these 80s. Uh, FM piano, I think Whitney Houston uh, sounds. Uh, they're fine for certain kind of music, but of course, don't show up at a jazz gig with, <laughs> with those. <laughs> um, Wurlitzer, basically the situation is the same. Uh, we have a few sample sets which are usable. Uh, piano Book has one or two as well. You can try to emulate it with FM synthesis, which works a bit better than for Rhodes Piano, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Hona Pianet. Um, we also have sample libraries. If you want to play the organ, there's and you don't want to use samples or a synthesizer to to try to sound like an organ. There's basically only only one thing I'm aware of, which is set B3, which doesn't sound too bad. I think the, the Leslie cabinet emulation could use some work, but it's, yeah, I think it's, it's perfectly usable. Uh, if you're into 60s rock and want to play some doors or, I don't know, uh, uh, some surf music, mm, you want to play transistor organs. Uh, you can have a look at Kaf organ you can and these transistor organs you can do very well with FM synthesis. Uh, the Hohner clavinet I didn't mention which is a keyboard instrument that has strings and these strings are they're hammered on with uh, I think it's some rubber pads or something like that. It's a very funky instrument uh, that's why it's been used by 
Stevie Wonder or Stevie Wonder made it a funky instrument. Uh, it has, has a very particular sound, but it can easily be sampled. It just um, doesn't have the, I don't know, the vari variety in sound that the real instrument has. Uh, and it can also be somewhat emulated with FM synthesis. Okay, we're coming to the synthesizers. Um, if you're into more kind of noises or music with single voices, you're looking into monosynths mm, or modular synths. And there we have tons of software. But my personal recommendation would be Search XT and Tal Noisemaker. Tal Noisemaker is a rather basic synth, but it sounds great and is easy to use. Search XT has everything and the kitchen sink. Uh, so it can be confusing, but you can, in my opinion, you can basically emulate any vintage synth with Search XT. So give it a try. Uh, uh, an honorable mention to Vital as well, but for me, Vital was a bit crashy. So your mileage may vary. Yeah, and, and a shout out to Cardinal and uh, Bespoke, which are modular synth synthesizer environments. So if you're into that, give them a try. Um, for the polysynths, it's basically the same. I just want to also mention. OBXD because it gives you the sound of Oberheim synthesizers, which are very important for certain periods and certain types of music. If you're in, into American music from the end of the 70s, start of the 80s, like Prince or I don't know, uh, who used mm, Simple Minds used an Oberheim, for example. Um, yeah, they have a certain kind of sound. I'm not aware of any free samples or instruments that emulate the RMI Electra piano, but because it's a very niche instrument, that's okay. Yeah, lots of string machines in the 70s. Um, fortunately, the, the differences between them are rather subtle. So I think you can get away with just using one software, which is just called Swing Machine. Or you can just use samples. And if you want to have Mellotron sounds, if you're into progressive rock, for example, use the Tatii GUI, maybe, <laughs> samples, um, which you can have as, as normal sound fonts or SFC. The Optican is another analog sampler which uses optical uh, media to playback samples. I'm not aware of any free samples for that. Okay, that's a disclaimer. These were my favorites. I worked with them and they worked rather reliably for me. Uh, you may prefer others and these may not work for you, but I built the two tracks uh, for this talk with them. So, yeah, sample players, I already mentioned. And for old style sound turns from the 90s, you can use these. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And moving on into the 80s, we get FM synthesis. I think these are my favorite FM synthesizers. And if you want to do drums, I shout out to Geon Kick and OT Simeon. Uh, the first one you can use for analog style drums or if you're just into synthesizing drums yourself. Uh, OT Simeon is if you're into Simmons drums, uh, so kind of 80s drums, that gets you there right from the start, but you can also synthesize other kinds of drums, sounds with that. And let's not forget effects. Up until the end of the 70s, 
the selection of effects was rather limited. We had basically chorus, flanger, phaser, delays, uh, vocoders, and uh, all kinds of distortion and overdrives. That was basically it, I think. And filters, huh? Yeah, reverb, yeah, yeah. Um, so these are the plugins I like to use. Um, there's one of my own in there as well. Uh, and we see most of these used in, in the track I'm going to show. Yeah, and for running all these plugins, these are session managers and plugin hosts that you can use. So we spoke not only a modular synthesizer, but also a plugin host. Uh, okay, um, I'll fix these links. I'll not go th through this. Uh, it's just sites I found where I can where you can find free sample libraries. These are where not so free sample libraries, but you can still use them freely. And these are specific instrument sample libraries. Okay. Now let's look at an actual project. Questions so far? None? Okay. So, unfortunately, all this is rather small. Um, but just to give you an overview, the first track we heard was mainly done with the string machine synthesizer and two or three other monophonic synthesizers. So all the polyphonic parts were done by a string machine and a few lead lines by other synthesizers. Uh, the drums were synthesized with Geon Kick and then there are a few effect noises which were also done by a synthesizer. So, for example, So, this is basically the sound that you get out of the box from String Machine, just sent through a phaser. This one is rather good. Remember this one. But you can also get different sounds. from this plugin. A bit more like a lead sound. Or well, more bellish sounds. Or You have an ar arpeggio. And then we have some lead sounds. These are made with Noisemaker, which I mentioned. The great thing about Noisemaker is it has oodles and oodles of presets, <laughs> which is not a common thing with free software. And uh, then I also used the OBXD for this plug sound. Okay, also the bass. 
again. Oh, noisemaker. Also the sub bass. Geon kick looks like, which is rather involved, but it's worth checking it out. Yeah, and all these noises and bleeps and booms were basically generated. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's in another track, but all these were made with uh, Tarn Noisemaker. Uh, it has lots of great presets and it's rather easy to make your own bleeps and bloops and pews and, and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions for on this project so far? No. I, I can repeat your question. If I want to have synthesized drums or drums that sounds like, sound like analog drum machines, yes, I would prefer to use these unless I'm lazy and just use samples. Uh, but if I want to use uh, like uh, real drum kits, uh, or a certain kind of electronic uh, sound, I use an SFC library. Uh, why don't I use things like AVL, AVL drum kit or, or I don't know, uh, other samplers? Because I want to have a separate channel for each uh, drum group and I want to decide myself which drums are grouped together and SFC allows me to do that. Uh, other, others like uh, AVL, they have fixed instrument groups or they have no separate outputs at, at all. So I find it just easier to program my own SFC library if, if I want to have a drum kit with, I don't know, 16 outputs or something like that. Does that answer the question? Okay. Okay, let's move on. Mm. So this may take some time. <laughs> okay, this is a track uh, where I used some of the electromechanical instruments like a Rhodes or organs like a Hammond and some polyphonic synthesizers. Um, and for example, uh, CP70 piano. Um, so we'll, let's listen to some of these in isolation. I think. Where did I put my glasses? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, yeah. These are these are all bounced because. Um, uh, sample libraries with SFIS, uh, if you have too many of them, you can get X runs rather easily, I'm afraid. So, for example, we have an organ uh, which was made by ZB3. <laughs> or we have something which is supposed to be a MOOC, a mini MOOC, playing a bass. Okay, or um, a clavinet. These are samples. Uh, 
perfectly usable in the mix. Hmm? Yeah, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> uh, where's the? Yeah, here's the. Or the Rhodes piano. This is also samples. And we have polyphonic synths. Picture a Roland uh, JX 3P or a, uh, a Juno 60 or something like that. And then we have vocoders, um, vocals. That's because you gotta have vocoder in the seventies. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, this time I used uh, real drums, but sampled drums, of course. No, and because I was lazy, I just had a stereo track for the drums. Normally I would have more tracks, but yeah. I was late in putting this track together. It's all rather fresh. Um, anything else? Well, we have uh, some low synth bass stuff. And some lead synth. Oops. Yeah, that's basically the gist of the track. So, uh, they're all not very special sounds. They're not, don't, do not have tons of modulation or wavetables or stuff. They're just basically analog synthesizers and uh, instruments like organ, Rhodes piano, normal piano. Um, it's how you put them together. They're not, may not be the best quality of sounds. You can get a better piano for, I don't know, a few hundred bucks uh, in software, but I think they're perfectly usable and you could, can put together great sounding tracks, so I, I hope to prove that by playing back the whole mix. And yeah, afterwards we have time for questions and that's my talk basically. I again just leave the other session running, but the playback actually comes from from this. Uh, sorry. Okay. Let's boogie. Turn up the volume, please.
Thank you. Okay, some places where you can find me online, or if you want to contact me directly. I'm looking for work, uh, be that uh, software development or something music related, so if you know anything or need anything, just get in touch. And time for questions, if you have any. Okay, there's one. Um, just a short question uh, to the uh, vocoder. Yeah. Uh, how the the pipeline is there? How is it working? Um, so there's a plugin called Tal Vocoder, uh, which basically has two inputs: uh, a mono audio input for the uh, carrier signal, and that's the left input, and the right input is for the modulator input. So, for example, your voice, uh, and you can either connect that to a sidechain input from another track, like you do with a compressor. Uh, what I did, I uh, because I wanted to have the carrier on its own track, so I put the vocoder on a bus track in, Ar in Ardor, connected the modulator uh, via a sidechain, and the carrier via a bus send, like uh, you would do with an effect, uh, like a delay or something like that. Just so I could have the output from the the carrier through the vocoder, but also unprocessed, and and, and have that with a s separate volume. So I, that's why I put it on its own track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, if you the difficult thing with vocoders is rather uh, finding a good set of uh, uh, yeah settings that sound good. It helps uh, to put uh, a compressor after the vocoder, a compressor after the voice before it goes into the vocoder. Also helps to put a chorus after voc the vocoder. Yeah, and lots of reverb. Uh, two questions. Yeah. One, how come you stole the unreleased uh, theme for Ghostbusters <laughs> and nobody caught you <laughs> uh, using their time machine? <laughs> yeah. And the second question, um, did you think about going further into how the music was mixed in back in then and what technology was available for mixing engineers and recording engineers mm. and how we could extend uh, the production to this as well? Well, okay, for the first question, um, nobody did call me because the one they used for the music already stole it from you, Lewis, <laughs> <laughs> and the news. Um, Thieves have no recourse. <laughs> um, second question, the 70s, late 70s, early 80s was the height of the analog uh, uh, engineering, yeah, sound engineering, basically. Afterwards, we, we started to go into digital, which changed things, some things for, not for the better, but who am I to say? Uh, but that makes it hard for us to uh, emulate in software, because it's software and not analog. So they used, uh, still used the big analog mixing desks, uh, they used analog outboard gear, uh, they started to use uh, digital reverbs and digital delays, but these became only common, I'd say, around 82-ish, 81. And then they also started to, have to use digital production machines like the uh, Fairlight and uh, Emulator and that stuff. So mm, for mixing... I think uh, one thing to do is uh, um, using a tape saturation effect on on your master bus and on basically all the tracks where you want it. <laughs> uh, don't go overboard with the highs. Um, don't overprocess the drums. 
uh, in the 70s, they still used very natural drum sounds, but then as we get into the 80s, we get uh, Peter Gabriel with the big Phil Collins da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, drums. And um, what else? Um, well, and, and also the sound comes from the instruments. Um, yeah. Does that begin to answer your question? Yeah. Uh, so maybe a follow up. Uh, would you consider making your uh, making the track tracks available so people can have a shot? Uh, for example, I'd love to have a version with multi-track drums mm -hmm. uh, that I could take a stab at uh, mixing them in the yes. area appropriate way. I will upload the other projects for this track to my GitHub uh, and also an other session archive to my next cloud. Put that link into the uh, GitHub README. Uh, these, I will put the tracks, the mixed tracks themselves on, on SoundCloud and probably on Bandcamp. You can always download them for free on uh, SoundCloud, but if you want to support me, you can pay, pay one euro or more on, on Bandcamp. Um, yeah. That's basically it. Um, I have to ask you how we're going to make these links known to you. Magic. Magic. Oh, okay. The no, magic we have the, of have social media. Yeah. <laughs> we have the Sonar Archive oh. where um, all the projects of, of every year are uh, archived. And then I send an email, of course. Mm. I have a question myself. Mm -hmm. um, which of the non existing solutions? If you could choose one, would you say, let's do this next? Um, probably a good ready-made Rhodes piano. Uh, because MDA is, is outdated. Uh, all the others are sample libraries which you need to in load into as fits, but then you need to fix them because the velocities aren't right, or I don't know, they're too big for your computer. So something like AVL drum kit, but as just loading the plugin and you're ready to go for Rhodes piano and Wurlitzer maybe, mm -hmm. but Rhodes piano is more important. And which of the three ways do you think is most realistic to do it? Sampling, synthesizer, or um, virtual modeling? Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah, question? which of the, what? How do you think that would be the best sounding result? Sample it, or use uh, a synthesizer yeah, engine, sam or sampling, some? Sampling. There are modeled uh, uh, electro acoustic pianos. Piano Tech also has, apart from pianos, also does uh, Rhodes and Wurlitzer, but it's not their main focus, and it's non-free. But I think uh, free software. I don't know. I've 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 seen one project that tried to model piano and it sounded awful. Uh, hello. Hi. Nice. Thank you. Good stuff. Uh, I'm really inspired by this question somewhere here mm -hmm. about kind of this kind of thought experiments. Like, what would it take to bring kind of the whole kind of musical context of the kind of mastering techniques and so on in? Uh, and then kind of, kind of this inspires the question like, do you play or do you work in a band situation or like with other musicians or other people? Of course, there's programmers somewhere mm. building this stuff. So I'm just kind of tapping onto this question of like the techniques at that time where, for instance, jamming in a studio with some other people who, I mean, as a musician, you can sit down and think like, okay, this would be a good chord progression but you won't know before the drummer starts doing something and then mm -hmm. kind of like this kind of situation of other people is like a kind of somehow precondition of this like old techniques when this multi-instrumental studio setup like you have mm -hmm. and that we have is not available. So short version, I, do you work alone or with other people? At the moment I work mostly alone. I was in a band years ago, but with uh, just normal proprietary commercial hardware. Uh, mostly used the Kurzweil synthesizer. Um, I wouldn't recommend most of the software I listed for 
playing live. Well, certainly SFIS is not stable enough. Uh, some of the synthesizers, I think, would ra ra work rather well. And then I would use something like the, the thing that Sven just presented, or the mod uh, pedals, or similar devices like Synthion. Uh, there's also the possibility of uh, open hardware, like uh, synthesizers like the uh, Mutable Instruments, Ambika, or the Preen FM, and what's this other virtual instrument, uh, virtual analog synthesizer called? Uh, the I don't know. Um, they're basically you, you not only the software is free, but the hardware as well, and they they work work great, and they're reliable. Uh, you switch them on, and they they work. <laughs> um, and yeah, for, for, for anything where you work with other musicians or you are in a live situation, the basic advice is always uh, test, test, test. Uh, test it out, I don't know, 10 times before you even think about getting on stage with it. That's why I didn't... Uh, perform here live. I tried it, but I didn't have time to, to try it out properly. So I'd rather have a, a good sounding per, uh, playback performance than a botched uh, live performance. <laughs> okay. Uh, there was a question here. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention something because you were saying that maybe that you're lacking a good uh, physical modeling for roads and, and mm -hmm. electric piano. But there is actually a project called EPMK1. Uh, it's a chamomile patch. I tried it a few years ago, and mm -hmm. it's really, really good. I I, I tested it against uh, Piano Tech mm -hmm. and also Real Road, and it sounds really good. So maybe you should look it up. Okay. Is it a, uh, does it have many modules? Is it very taxing on the? Uh, no, not so much. In the, as far as I can remember, it was uh, it was pretty decent in pretty soft on the CPU, and sounds really good. And mm -hmm. of course, it's open source, so. Okay. There you go. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to hear, hear, hear a demo track and be it's convinced. It's <laughs> EPMK1, and uh, I just looked it up. You can find it on patch storage. It's a chamomile patch. So I think it's, a, it's like a pure data patch that was wrapped into something, and you can use it as a, as a standard plugin. Yeah, that's, I only listed, it, listed things that you can, I don't know, just load up in your, in your DAW. Uh, I didn't list any things where you have to patch things together or something because, yeah. Mm. Any more questions? Okay, it's rather late in the day anyway, so we I better stop now. Thank you very much.